Calvin Timms, welcome back to another episode of Dice After Dark. Uh, you can find us over on Twitter at TDC underscore Calvin and at Dynasty underscore Dale. I'm back with my co-host Dale here today, and we're going to be talking about our Dynasty running back rankings. So last week we put out our quarterback rankings. We're going to be going through all the positions up and to the NFL draft at the end of this month. Happy Easter for everybody out there. You know, it's Easter Sunday, so a nice little day with the family today. Dale, how you how you feeling? Have a good day. Yeah, yeah. I had a very good day. I am not ready to go back to work tomorrow. So I know. It, it was a long wait. weekend. Oh my gosh. Yes, it definitely was. Absolutely. Very, very long. Didn't really get to uh, relax on Easter weekend, but such is the life when you have two small kids, right? Yes. Absolutely. All right, and then last week we also put out our mock draft um, for one quarterback league, super fl- or not not super flex, one quarterback going to super flex, ten team. Mm-hmm. So go check that out as well. You can kind of see our thoughts with real world examples on these players on how you should be drafting them and thinking about them for specific team needs. Uh, so yeah, go check those episode episodes out as well. But yeah, I'm excited to drop our top six dynasty running back rankings today tomorrow we'll be back with 7 through 12 but it's a it's kind of a whole new world it feels like because a lot of the running backs are turning over we talked about this a little Mm -hmm. bit last year you know there's a lot of older running backs out there and they're all starting to get replaced and you've got the new wave of guys and you can see that in both of our rankings pretty heavily so um yeah, pretty exciting. I, I I agree with that. Like, it's kind of sad to see some of the running backs that we kind of kind of like grew up with a little bit and and, <laughs> and kind of kind of got the coming of age, you know, yeah. uh, running backs, and now they're old, busted, or arrested. Right, right. Yep. It's kind of yeah. It's if you if you join, depending on when you joined fancy, I guess. But guys like yeah. Dalvin Cook, who have been around, I think Dalvin was drafted my first rookie draft. You know, so he's been yeah. around a while. So seeing him fall off, he's not in our top twelves either. One of us, and it's just like man, the changing of the guard is finally here. It's finally. Absolutely. It's probably a good thing though, to be honest, because it it feels like it's yeah. been so stagnant at the top forever, but. Yeah, it's where it comes in with a little bit of risk, right? And we'll we'll jump Absolutely. into it with a couple of our guys here. So that said, we're gonna jump over to our top well or our top six guys. And you know, I'm gonna be starting with a guy here who is my number one guy, and it's gonna be Jonathan Taylor. So Jonathan Taylor, very good running back, and yeah. He's still going to be my number one. I cannot move off of him just because he had an injury last year. You know, you look at the games that he actually played, and this is on a dumpster fire team. He was still really good for fantasy football. And I just don't think that with Shane Steichen coming in to be the new head coach, calling the plays. I mean, he was calling all the plays for Philadelphia for the last year and a half when everybody was in love with you know, Jalen Hurts and that rushing offense over there. Jonathan Taylor is much better than Miles Sanders and mm-hmm. Kenny Gainwell and, you know, Absolutely. Boston Scott and all those guys combined. So JT is still the number one guy. I think this offense is going to be rolling. I think there was a little bit to it as well that the Colts pulled Jonathan Taylor at the end of last year, not to risk re-injury with him as well, you know, in a wasted, wasted second half of the year why play him out there so um you know he's a stud why why risk getting him injured again so everyone's saying oh well he didn't really come back at the end of the year I think that was intentional they their team sucked it was terrible why why throw him out there so Jonathan Taylor I still think is the best running back in football but I know you have a different guy number one talk about JT real quick and where you have him ranked yes um I, I I love Jonathan Taylor um I think he's I think he's very excellent um I'm a little worried about the indie offense is why I have him ranked number two in, in my rankings. Um, I feel I would feel a little bit better if he had a better vision at quarterback and a better vision. Maybe, maybe even next year, I'll probably feel more comfortable having him potentially at the top spot. 
you know, um, on, honestly, but um, I really feel it's just because of all the unknowns that we have with um, Seichen in, in his offense. And if he's going to be a competent head coach slash offensive coordinator slash whatever he did in Philly, see how that translates over to Indy and their offense in the crazy Jim Ursay and their uh, GM. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. So, it's a, it's make or break year. It feels like, but you know, absolutely. if you're going with a, a rookie quarterback, but I mean, man, can you imagine, I, I still think they're going to get Lamar. I really, really I, do. And Lamar and JT, if Lamar's there, it's going to be electric. I know, electric. man, like JT is going to, Lamar might, might vulture a few touchdowns from him, but mm-hmm. dude, I am not worried whatsoever about 0%. Yeah. Yeah. He's still so good. He might have a few less passes though, which could hurt him a little bit, but yeah, I think the the yardage will more than make up for that. No, I agree. So, um, so with my number one guy, who, um, so I real quick, have, where did you have yeah, JT yeah, ranked? Um, I had him, I had him ranked number two. Okay, so you have so, a different number one. Yes, I do have a different one. You know, I I I do love Jonathan Taylor. I think he is the best non rookie in Dynasty right now. Based on the running back side. So with that, I do have the B. John Robinson at number one. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a lot of it goes to his hype. I know we have not seen him play a snap in the NFL. Mm-hmm. And some people are scared about that, which I fully wholeheartedly understand. You know, I'm a little bit off rookie sometimes, but I'm sure. just going I'm just going head over heels in 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 rookies in my rankings. You know, I'm <laughs> I'm I'm trying to have these bold takes right. a little bit before everybody else does. Sure. Um, you know, I, I, I think Bijan is going to be legit. Um, I feel he's, I feel he's going to have, I feel he's, he's been the most hyped running back since Saquon Barkley. Mm-hmm. And I, I really feel he really feel his game is very similar. It, it's, it's a Saquon, you know, like he's, he's, he's pretty shifty. He has a pass catching ability. And I think he has all the, all the tools we like to see in a running back. Mm-hmm. And I feel if he could be successful for five to six years, that is an A plus pick in fantasy. You know that's going to be your one hundred and one for the next couple of years. Sure, startup drafts and redrafts. Yeah, in non non super flex, right? But yes, yes, absolutely. Yep, I'm with absolutely. You. So, so yeah, I'm I'm very excited. I'm very very excited about Bijan and what he's going to do. Now, most people would probably agree with you. I have seen him going mm-hmm. off the board as the the dynasty oh. one hundred and one for running backs, but um, yeah, it's. For me, he's my number four guy, and you know I have him a like slight, it. slight like tier it. behind the next guys. Yeah. And um, the, the I guess I'll talk about him really quickly here, so we're not overlapping. And just FYI, so we we did not plan this. Dale gave me his oh. top top six guys, um, well, his top twelve right before the podcast started, and we have the exact same top six, just in a mm-hmm. different order. So we'll talk about these guys all together, I guess. But Bijan Robinson for me is number four. And he's a slight tier breakdown between him and my top three guys who we'll talk about. But the biggest thing is you you haven't seen him in the NFL yet. And I get it. Like the hype is real. He's a very, very good player. I'm not I'm not denying that in any way, shape, or form by putting him here at four. The problem is we've just seen a lot of these guys come to the NFL and they're not as good in the NFL as they are in college. It's just such a different game. In, in the NFL in terms of competition level. And, you know, I do believe he's going to be drafted very highly in this upcoming draft. I think he's going to be a top 15 pick. Where exactly? I don't know. And to who? I, I can't tell you. Not till the end of this month. But, you know, if he gets traded for for the Cowboys, you know, they trade up to get him or, you know, the Eagles take him at 10, whatever it might be. I think that he's going to go somewhere where they're going to utilize him as a workhorse. The problem is, you know, there's one, the risk of injury when you're, (laughs) you're not playing, you're not used to playing against the level of competition. We've seen it a lot from high end running backs last couple of years, Brees Hall, Javante Williams. A lot of these guys come in and they just get injured in year one and they don't get to live up to that hype. Or, you know, like Saquon, he came in, he lived up to it, but then he got injured the next year. And I'm not betting on an injury. That's not why I have him at four. The problem is it's just too many unknowns. You don't know the team. Right. You don't know the situation. You don't know how he's going to produce at the NFL level. Everyone else in my top 12, we've seen on an NFL field, and we know that they're studs. 
I believe Bijan Robinson is a stud, and very easily could he vault up to my 102 next year, right? Probably right behind Jonathan Taylor or competing with Jonathan Taylor. But I just cannot put him there yet. I do believe he has that potential, but in reality, I don't know if he's necessarily going to help you win your league this year. I think he's going to do very, very well for your league this year. But, you know, this year alone, if you can't trust him this year, you know, there's just too many unknowns at this point in time. But like you said, the potential is there. The hype is there. And I wanted to put him highly. I just couldn't, you know, jump some of my other guys there. So. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I 100% understand that. I would normally have that take, but I'm trying to be he's bold this really year. Good, and it, it, I, no, he's really good, man. It's hard for me to really be. Good. <laughs> and, it, and, it's, and, it, and it's really hard in Dynasty especially to not oh, be yeah. excited about oh, yeah. a, a running back because they are few. Oh, I know. That, and that's the problem with my ranking of Bijan at four, right? I'm trying to be level-headed about it, but and there's no world it where you're going to get him at four. It is tough. There's, no, he's going to exactly. be the, no. the 101 or the 102 in pretty much every single league for any exactly. dynasty startup. So, you know, good luck trying to get him that late. But if you can get him before, I think that's perfect value for him. Oh, you probably 100%. have to take him one or two. And, you know, that's where I'm just, I'm a little hesitant because my number two and number three, we'll just drop these guys really quickly. I have CMC Christian McCaffrey at number two, and I have Saquon Barkley at number three. Now, you talked about Saquon already being compared to Bijan. I like Saquon Barkley. We finally saw him healthy this last year. And, um, you know, we didn't have any stats to pull up for for Bijan because he has nothing in the NFL. But, you know, here's last year for Saquon Barkley. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're not, make sure you go and watch on YouTube. Come on, guys. What are we doing here? I got the YouTube channels, but... You know, this podcast is also available on Spotify, Apple. If you're just driving and listening to us talk, we'll try and make sure you're following along that way. But yeah, if you can while you're there, also just leave a like, comment, subscription, review, anything to help out with the podcast. We're just trying to grow all off season. So thank you guys for that. But yeah, Saquon Barkley last year, we saw the resurgence with Brian Dayball coming into the Jets or the Giants, the other New York team. Um Man, it's been a long Sunday. My brain is like half scrambled. I'm not going to lie. It's fried. (laughs) But you can see his game logs here, and he was just so good. He was their entire offense, and, you know, I don't think they're going to change that too much. You know, OBJ just got signed to the Ravens a little bit ago, so he's not coming back to New York. They might trade for a Brandon Ayuk or a Jerry Judy or one of these guys, but that's their first-round pick. They don't have a ton of draft capital, and they have other holes on this roster that they can't just invest all of it in the wide receivers. They brought back a lot of wide receivers as well, um, Shepard and you know some of the other guys there. So I just don't think they're going to heavily invest in the wide receiver. They're going to try and get a alpha dog guy there, but... Saquon Barkley is still going to be a rock solid guy, and I think he's going to be able to help you for multiple years. Yes, he's 26 years old, but he was so banged up early in his career. He basically has missed two years of his first five due to injury, and you know it's fluke injuries, like it's the ACL. It's not a recurring injury for most guys out there. He had the high ankle sprain a couple of times, and it's just like unfortunate injuries and you saw what he's able to do when he finally came back fully healthy. So or Saquon Barkley is my number three and Sa- or Christian McCaffrey, gosh, my brain is fried, man, is my number two guy here. And yep. it's solely due to what we saw at the end of last year with Kyle Shanahan. Like it was mm-hmm. just nuts. That production in Kyle Shanahan's offense is insane. Like he should be the... <laughs> He should be the redraft 101. Like, honest to God, he should yeah, be the redraft probably 101. Will um, he probably will be. I don't think be. he will be. I think it'll be a JT or a Bijan, for example, due to the hype. But, I mean, the guy was just so dang good with, with San Francisco. The only problem is he's also 26. I have the edge to him over Saquon Barkley because he's got the long contract with the Niners. But... Man, the dude is just so good. And similar to Saquon Barkley, he's missed about two years now due to injury, and it's fluke injuries. You know, it's like a hamstring one Mm -hmm. year. Um, I forget the other injury he had. It wasn't the hamstring both years, but, you know, he was finally able to get back and play every game last year, back to a a massive snap percentage share, and 
he looked really good. And, you know, Christian McCaffrey is still a stud. And I think he's being devalued a lot in Dynasty right now. So what are your thoughts on those two guys? Um, I 100% agree with uh, CMC and him being devalued. I think the biggest thing he has against him is some of the injuries and his age. Sure. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's for him. Like, he's been in the league six years. Um, he's... He's been injured a couple times, you know, like he's had down seasons the past couple years, like mm-hmm. other than this past season, you know, like he only played in three games in 2020, seven games in uh, 21, you know, and that's a fairly big concern. But with um, Kyle Shanahan, you know, at being being the OC is huge for him. You know, um, I, I, f- I feel in Carolina, he was the only guy that was relevant, you know, honestly. And it was it it was it was, it was really tough to see him kind of kind of do what he did because he he was everything from. I know. Very long. I know it was crazy. So, he got yeah, traded so, in what week? Um, week thirteen was it, or was it? Wasn't it, I think it's like it was like week eight or something. Was it earlier? It was, okay. Yeah. Or Man. yeah, it was fairly. It was fairly early. He was just so dang good. It was crazy. But you know, you look at. I have his his player card pulled up on Sleeper, and you know his rookie season RB ten, second year RB two, RB one, injury season, injury season. His per game numbers in those two years were absolutely nuts when he did play in those in those games. But okay. you know he was the fifty three, thirty eight, and then back to RB two. So if he can stay healthy, man, he's just so good, and that's why he's my number two guy. I do think you're going to be able to get like two, three years out of Christian McCaffrey still. Mm-hmm. That's the length of his contract anyway, and he's going to be with Kyle Shanahan pretty much the entire time. So you know he's going to be rock solid in terms of usage. They were milking amazing seasons out of Raheem Moster at age 28, mm-hmm. so it's not like they can't use an older running back. And then Saquon Barkley, like I said, I just believe Saquon's back finally. And again, all three of these guys, the reason I have them above a B. John Robinson is because I just think that they are proven quantities at this point. When they're right. healthy, they're really good for fantasy football. So, um, you know, Bijan could definitely surpass him. I'm not saying that he doesn't have that potential. He definitely does. But I just can't rank him because these guys are studs, man. Like, to out, he has to live up to the hype to pass these guys up. So, doesn't mean he can't do it, but I just, I have to temper <laughs> expectations just a tiny bit there. So, um, give me your thoughts, your, your rankings on CMC and McCaffrey. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it's it's for or, CMC. It's yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> no, no, you're good. Yeah, and for Barkley, it's it's for CMC. I have him ranked four. Okay. Um, I I think that's the biggest thing is is the age factor, honestly, and mm-hmm. I feel that's the only thing holding him back from. I mean, I almost thought about putting him number one, really. <laughs> no, um, man, it's it's, so it's, it's because I I I love him so much. I feel he I feel he does so many different things than a lot of these guys that we're going to talk about do. Mm-hmm. he's and, he, and he's just really good at everything yep so you know you know i do agree with that with barkley but he has had some injury seasons a, a, along with cmc and he's getting to the point where he's 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 getting closer to that that uh running back wall that we typically see. um and that that's really that's what really worries me a little bit about barkley um and you know um I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens when there's more weapons in 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 New York compared to very little. Um so I think that's that's going to be an interesting little facet that we are going to have to watch, but I I still think he's going to he's probably going to be a top 5 for the next year, or two, probably two or three years for 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 mm-hmm. Barkley honestly. So, you know, I don't think you would I I don't think you would be wrong with going with him. Um I do have him ranked 6th. But I have a couple guys that are ranked ahead of these guys, uh, the, these uh, of CMC and Barkley that are younger, mm-hmm. and that that that's just really what I see is is the youth factor in these guys. All right, so yeah, and the, the, the one thing too, you said additional competition for Saquon, and actually, I I, I almost feel like more threats in this offense actually help Saquon Barkley because you know you go back to last season at the end of the year he was their entire offense it was him and Daniel Jones just 
doing oh. everything on the ground. Daniel Jones was not good by any stretch of the imagination, but man, when everybody knew that they didn't really have to care about the tight ends or the receivers for this team, and it's just, uh, I mean, they've already brought in Darren Waller. I actually, you know, forgot about that until just this moment, but, right. um, you know, they get a, they go and get a Brandon Ayuk, a Jerry Judy. This team is looking good, man. And I, I don't think Absolutely. that they're going to cannibalize each other that much. I think they want to get to the point where they can put more on Daniel Jones to, to throw the ball around a little bit more. And when your best, your second best receiver is Richie James, it's probably not the, the tough. best, it's tough. Uh, right? Yes. Like Darius Slayton Extremely was their tough. number one wide receiver last year, which Come on, man. Like, you know, it's, it's just rough. So I actually don't think more weapons is going to hurt Saquon. I think that they're, it's going to open them up a little bit more that they can get him utilized a little bit more with the underneath passes or, or you know, they can – he might see a little bit of a decrease in the uh, the targets, but I think his yardage is going to go up exponentially. He's just so good, but if he's getting – you know, if everybody's kind of just covering him, he's got two, a spy on him the entire time – it's hard for him to really it break it, it out. To stop him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You can't break a, yeah, no. a massive play every single play. So, um, yeah, I think a little bit more competition is going to help Saquon Barkley more than hurt him. But, no, I do understand yeah. the there's a little bit of trepidation there. You know, we, we've been burned by him a couple years in a row. Yeah. So, you know, vaulting him back up there to the top, it, it is a little tough. So, um, no, I definitely get that. Let's hear your number three and number five guy because they are my five and six because we yes. saw the top, same top six here. So who do you have at three? All right, so at three, I have I have the formerly injured Brees Hall. Um, I really love what Brees Hall showed in the Jets offense last year. He was electric. He was fantastic. He was catching passes from horrible Zach Wilson. He was running every, every which way. Um, and unfortunately, he got... Uh, he he tore his ACL in week seven, mm-hmm. so he should he should be on track to be back probably week one. Um, I don't believe it was a similar injury to uh, J.K. Dobbins, mm-hmm. thankfully. Yeah, it was just um, the, just so, the ACL, which was lucky. Yeah, it, it was it was it was just the ACL. Um, so I I I I, I believe he's going to be on track and he's going to be fine for you know probably he's probably going to have a little bit slower start this year because of mm-hmm. the injury in in my opinion, but. Um, I, I think with what the jets are projected to have and hopefully Aaron Rodgers eventually, but you know, time will tell on that one. <laughs> Funny thing I, about I, that. I, I, Funny thing about that. I, I just saw a video of, um, Joe Douglas at a, hmm? you know, presser with donors or something like that, you know, some higher ups with the jets. And basically he said to this whole audience of people, yeah, he's coming. So, you know, they're, right, they, right. everyone's expecting. I sure hope so. Yeah. They're just working on final trade compensation. And yeah. Gar- it's probably money related and everything like that. So it, it's yeah, going it, to happen. It it's going to happen for sure. So, yeah. you know, assuming that they have an Aaron Rodgers, does that change? Does that help Brees? Does that hurt Brees? You know, like compared to last um, year? I, 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 th- I think, I think that's going to help him honestly, because sure. I think, I think he could be a very, very similar to what Aaron Jones did. And, okay. you know, you know, honestly with Aaron Jones has, has been very, very sneaky in, 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 fa- in fantasy the, the past yep. couple of years. Yep. You know, in, you know, in, in, in getting these RB one finishes, like I think he finished, finished 11th. Well, in, he finished ninth in PPR leagues. Like, yeah. You, is, he was in, sneaky in, in, good. Insane. Sneaky good. Yeah. It, we, 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 which is boom insane boom bust, right? Yeah, it's very boomer bust. But, you know, I think Brees Hall is a better runner than Aaron Jones. Has ever 100, been. I, I, yep, I, yeah, 100%. Yeah, I, I, I feel his vision's better. Um, like, he, he just has a better feel for everything. So I'm very, very excited about Brees Hall. I think he's going to be fantastic. But I do think it's going to be a little a little, a little, rough sledding in the beginning, the, the first few weeks. So, you know... Like in your redraft leagues, don't don't give up on him quite yet. But in your in your dynasty in your dynasty drafts, I would definitely pick him up. You know, sooner than later. In my sure. Opinion. Um. Yeah. And I have Brees at six. So here's a couple things I want to talk about with you really quickly. You know, what are the thoughts? Because I have the game log pulled up here, and you know, week one, ten points, thirteen, fifteen, fifteen, 
28, 21, 13. Like, and that's week, the last week is the one he got injured, you know, 20% of the snaps. He was cooking before that, <laughs> you know, four mm-hmm. for 72 and a touchdown before well, he, before he took, towards ACL. But the thing is, right, you know, Aaron Rodgers is going to come over here. They were running the ball pretty heavily with Zach Wilson. It took him a couple weeks to really ramp up to Brees Hall's usage. <sighs> My my biggest fears with Brees Hall, and you know, I agree that he's a very talented guy, but they gave him they opened him up to a larger workload, and he instantly got injured. Right, he had three weeks of you know, multi like double digit touches, except for I guess well four weeks I guess if you count the the receptions in week number three there, but. You know, he only had four weeks of double digit touches and then he got injured. So are they going to give him a full workhorse role again for this team? And then two, the second biggest concern is with Aaron Rodgers coming over, I don't know if they're going to want to run the ball as much anyway. Right. And I think Michael Carter is someone that the Jets really like on this team. And you can say whatever you want about Michael Carter for fantasy football. It does not matter. They like this guy for the actual team, and he profiles as more of a the the third down scat back that is more of the Aaron Jones from Green Bay, and whereas Brees Hall is more of the AJ Dillon, much better. Don't get me wrong; I'm not comparing Brees Hall to AJ Dillon. I think he's a right. much better runner, like you mentioned. But I think that he can catch like Aaron Jones. I'm not debating that, but I just think that they see Michael Carter as more of the third down guy. So you know, if if they're gonna be Passing the ball a lot more, which means less carries on the ground for Brees Hall. They're not going to increase his target usage because, one, it, it, he got injured with such a high carry count. And say what you will about that. I'm not arguing the analytics or anything of that. From a team perspective, they're not. They're going to look at it and say, hey, we up this guy's touches. Maybe we don't do that as much, right? And you can argue that all you want. It doesn't matter. From a real life perspective, that's what they're going to look at. It. These are real people. They're not going to just look at this the stat sheet. Oh, well, if you give this guy fifty touches again, it's not going to matter long term. Yeah, I get that it averages out for most guys, but when you have the human being in front of you, it's it's going to change things, right? So, if they're not going to give him as many touches, they're not going to put him in the more third down role, which is traditionally Michael Carter's job in this offense. You know, are we being too optimistic about a Brees Hall here? I see that, but I'm still not worried. You know, okay. I, I, I see him, I, I, I see in his game blog that, that like he didn't break 50% snap percentage. And I feel, feel with him, if, if, if he stays in that 60% range, he's mm-hmm. going to be just fine. He's going to be just fine. Sure. I, I feel he's going to be, uh, you know, a 15 to 20 pointer every week, pretty easy. And, you know, and that's really what you want in the running back position. Sure. You know, on, on, honestly, like if you can get that consistency every week, that's something that you're gonna want and have. And I, I really think that I understand what you're saying, but I still think he's going to he's gonna shine. Michael Carter. I think Michael Carter is a back, but he's good. He's fine. You know, he's fine. He, he's okay. He's okay. But I, I think when it, I, I, I think when it comes down to it, that Reese Hall is the guy, and that's what they drafted him to be. And that's what they're going to try to make him. Yeah, we'll see. So, we will see. So, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you trade up for a running back in round two. It's it's a pretty heavy investment, even though it's round two. I understand that, but 100%. yeah, that I'm just I'm a little nervous. Like of all these guys in the top six, him and Saquon are the two that I'd be wanting to sell at a premium right now because I think you could get a premium on these two guys. Brees Hall is injured right now. He's, he had an ACL yeah. tear, and he's still going. But you clearly have him as a top three guy, and I just don't know if he's ever going to return that. There's a lot of good running backs coming out into from college over the next couple of years. So, you know, you got Bijan up there, and for me, he's not even top four. But, yeah, for me, I'd be selling Brees Hall at a premium. I think that you could yeah. get – a very good haul. Like if you got a Zach Charbonnet or a Jameer Gibbs plus a, a Drake London, for example, like to me, that's a smash, but you know, mm-hmm. it's up to you. I I don't know. I, I, am I crazy with that? No, no, it's, it, it's not crazy. Like I, I, I understand that. And if, if someone offers you a, a haul for, 
Reese Hall, you know, I would definitely take it. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, if, if it's in picks, you know, I would try to get a very high pick this year's draft. You know, sure. I wouldn't try to get anything, you know, past like five or six, you know, plus, plus something. Sure. sure. You know, yes. so I, 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 yeah, is, is, is the biggest thing just to be aware of. Like right. you want to make sure that you get good value for him. And I feel, I feel you really could. Yeah, like the one six, one seven, and the one ten, you get there. There you go. You get Zach Charbonnet, and you get you get JSN or someone like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sign me 100%. up. Sign 100%. me up. But yeah. yep. um, no, that's that's just a few thoughts there. It, it's kind of funny. We have Saquon Barkley and Brees just absolutely switched in our in our rankings, which yeah. yep, just ironic, you know. Again, the yep. the red flags for me around Brees are just. I think that Saquon's a little bit more. Locked and loaded, but I do understand it's a safer that, option. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, and, and Brees is twenty one though. I so <laughs> I get the upside long term. Yeah. Definitely understand that for sure. So, um, all right. Now, last guy we both have at five is going to be Kenneth Walker. Give me your breakdown of Kenneth Walker real quick. Um, I love Kenneth Walker. I uh, I watched him quite a bit at uh, Michigan State when he was in college. And he ran angry and ran and ran over defense after defense after defense after defense. Yeah, um, he was good. I mean, I, I mean, I will say in college that that the only defense he didn't run all over was Ohio State's defense, and they, and they perennially have NFL. Mm-hmm. So, so you know, um, I, I think with him being with Geno Smith and Pete Carroll, which, which that offense was a little bit more. It it wasn't as run heavy. It it didn't feel as run heavy. I, I should say. Agreed. Last year, as as in years past, mm-hmm. because they let Geno cook compared to letting compared to them not letting uh, Russ cook. Which yeah, I, I know. Great. I know. You know, it's it's highly ironic. Um, but um, I think he's a very good pass catcher. Which 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 coming into the league, like like didn't see him really as a pass catcher. But that's because he didn't. Michigan does do that Michigan college. doesn't do it. They just never Michigan throw the State, running back. Michigan State doesn't. Yeah. Well, yeah. So, so yeah. So hey, it's it's all good. But that is a big. A big <laughs> so, but I don't want to get killed but, here. You know, I'm sorry, Michigan no, fans. De- I de- de- definitely not. So you know, it's it's with that. You know, I I really like him, and I think he's going to be a sneaky value in some drafts because I th- I, I I just I just think with with his age, you know, he what he's 22. Yeah. Um and you know, I, I understand how he finished um last year. Like he like he finished eight, 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 eighteenth in PPR league. Mm-hmm. Which you know, which isn't bad for a rookie year, you know. I mean we're I mean we're going off of I mean we've had years with, you know, Jonathan Taylor that we were spoiled with, say Barkley, you know, uh CMC, you know, the past, you know, Five, four or five years that we've been really spoiled with these high end running backs that have come into the, come into the league and really um, shown shown what they could do. So, right. But you know, I think overall that you know in in the beginning of, in the beginning of the year he 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 played really it kind of mm-hmm. was pretty slow. He didn't play for the first he, month, really. I mean, re- yeah, know. yeah. On honestly, and and then you know it's it's the last you know two thirds of the year he really picked it up. And, you know, I would say he averaged probably about 15, 14, 15 points a, a week, you know, averaged, which is fantastic. You know, you know, I, 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 I think the targets could go up. Maybe I hope they go up a little bit, but it's it's hard knowing with what Gino is going to do and how he's going to project next year. I think I think, I think a lot of teams good, were sur- I, I think I think he's good. He's fit. I think he's good. But <laughs> but I think I think a lot of teams were surprised of what Gino did because of what they saw in, in, um, New York, in New York with the jets and giants. And, you know, yeah. I, I, I just, I just don't think he had good offensive play callers to really give him a chance. So, uh, so like, I think he, so like, I think Gino is going to help a lot with Kenneth, with Kenneth Walker. And I think they help both of what, of what their strengths are. So, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm I'm just really excited about Kenneth Walker. I I think I think if he has a good year this year that he's going to go in my rankings. So sure, can't wait to see what he does this year. 
Yeah, I think he's kind of, for me, I just don't really see much upward trajectory for him. Okay. Like, I don't think he'll ever crack top three, unfortunately. Like, fair, he's really fair. good. Um, but I just don't know, you know, with uh, Pete Carroll, he's just an old school guy, right? And yeah. <laughs> that's the one thing. But no, you look at Kenneth Walker last year, didn't play really for the first month at all, and then really started to cook in the middle of the season. Fell off a little bit at the end of the year, but... You know, everything kind of tracks if you were following the the injuries of the Seattle offensive line. They were fully healthy at the beginning of the year. Unfortunately, he didn't get to play with them until until week five, really, four right, and five. Right. But, you know, right at the, I think it was around week 11 or 12, they right after the bye week, they lost a lot of their their offensive linemen. Um, I think they lost two offensive line two offensive line starters from this team. And this was already a weak offensive line beforehand, anyway, right? But they finally got the tackles, the first round pick, and then the third round pick who were stepping up. But they kind of got figured out a little bit at the end of the year as well. Add in injury, and that's why the Seattle collapse was so heavy at the end of the year, right? They were killing it to to start the year, and then you know they just kind of fell off the face of the earth. And it a lot of it had to do with the offensive line. There was so much pressure on Geno Smith and the running game and everything. So the fact that they were still able to produce good fantasy weeks at the end of the season for Kenneth Walker should tell you how good this guy is, right? I think that he's going to be a stud long term, but I just don't know if what I don't know how much higher he can go. I believe he's going to finish, right. you know, probably around RB number eight, seven, six, somewhere in that range. And with the youth factor added in there, bumps him up a little bit in my rankings. But yeah, I just, I like Kenneth Walker a lot. I think he's going to be very stable in terms of value. For me, he's kind of like a younger Josh Jacobs, right? Where he's a very, very good player, highly drafted and went to a good landing spot not much competition and was very good early on. He's just going to get a little bit better. I just don't know if we're going to see a massive leap forward from Kenneth Walker. It's possible. It right. is definitely possible, but yeah, it is. Um, it is. I just, I'm hedging a little bit against him there with the other talents that we, we know are our elite, like a Bijan, for example, or a CMC or JT, those kind of guys were, you know, they've already taken that leap forward. So for your fantasy squad, for the next couple of years at least, those guys are definitely going to be reigning supreme there. So that is our top six. So really quickly, we'll go through it one more time. Number one for me was Jonathan Taylor. Two, CMC, Christian McCaffrey. Three, Saquon Barkley. Four, B. John Robinson. Five, Kenneth Walker. And six, Brees Hall. Dale, what was your top six? Um, um So I, I had B. John at one, Jonathan Taylor at two, Brees Hall at three, CMC at four, Kenneth Walker the third at five. And Saquon Barkley at six. All right. So, any last thoughts on this top tier of the top 12 guys here? We're all good. All right. So, thank you guys for joining us. Let us know your thoughts on our top six. Again, we had the exact same, just in a different order. So, you can tell us who was right, who was wrong there, or somebody that we're missing out on completely that you think should be up there. There's a few game names, man. When you get to rankings, it's always so hard. You're, you have to be yeah. so subjective and, and splitting so many hairs to to kind of break some of these guys up but you can let us know in the comments down below or wherever you're listening to the podcast what you think of our top six here come back tomorrow you'll get our seven through 12 to finish out the rb number ones for dynasty football until then you can follow us on twitter at tdc underscore calvin at dynasty underscore dale and thank you guys for joining us have a good night